fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. It is a privilege that God grants us to gather and to let this Eucharist be a reminder to us of the call to unity that is issued to each one of us. And recognizing that at a time we bear some responsibility for that broken unity through the sinfulness of our own lives, let us come before our Heavenly Father, trust in his mercy and compassion, and ask for pardon of our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to a new life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship you living among us in the sacrament of your body and blood. May we offer to our Father in heaven a solemn pledge of undivided love. May we offer to our brothers and sisters a life poured out in loving service of that kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I had handed on to you Namely, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed and took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Every time, then, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Bless your name, O Lord. I will bless your name, O Lord. I will extol you, my God and King. I will bless your name, O Lord. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I will bless your name, O Lord. One generation shall laud your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will bless your name, O Lord. 
the Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. I will bless your name, O God. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. I will bless your name, O God. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. I will bless your name, O God. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. I will bless your name, O fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. I will bless your name, O God. The Lord watches over all those who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. I will bless your name, O God. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. I will bless your name, O God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live in me and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd of the Jews, I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. At this, the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can he give us his flesh to eat? Thereupon, Jesus said to them, Let me solemnly assure you, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has life eternal and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood real drink. The man who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the Father who has life sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so the man who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. 
unlike your ancestors who ate and died nonetheless, the man who feeds on this bread shall live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Being invited to offer a few words of reflection today offers me the chance as a representative of the National Shrine staff to extend a welcome and extend our gratitude to you for your consistent willingness to bring this conference to the Catholic University of America and then to share in your worship celebrations by bringing the dignity of the beauty of these various liturgies into the Crypt Church here at the Shrine. And so as Associate Rector of this Basilica, I extend a very warm welcome to the members of the hierarchy in particular, to those priests and religious who have traveled to be with us, and to all who are indeed dear friends in Christ Jesus. As we recognize then the opportunity that God grants us to gather and to share prayer with one another, we can reflect profitably on the fact of how the one God inspires many different expressions of a common unity within the church. And your celebration this week then becomes a very opportune chance of giving a concrete demonstration to how those various expressions of a common love can be formed and bound together. And though the expression may differ, the commonality of heart can indeed be one. And it is that theme that I would like to draw upon as this brief reflection today, to sense that as God inspires various traditions within the church, he is in a sense looking to have two wings within the church, each of which has the capacity and the power to elevate the whole body of the church. And without one of those wings operative, the church is lacking. It does not elevate itself and soar in the manner that God desires his church to be visible within the world. And so we must look at the wings of Eastern tradition and Western tradition and see how the God who inspires each challenges them to work together and not work at odds so that the church may indeed take off, so to speak, and have an appeal that speaks universally to the common hunger for salvation in Christ Jesus. And if we reflect then on the Eastern wing first, we sense how, as our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, points out in Orientale Lumen, that there really is a wonder to the mystical style of celebration that the East puts before us, that its consciousness of the dignity of God's transcendence and the entrance of the mystical into the Eastern style of worship becomes an attraction to the human heart which instinctively recognizes that we are not on the same plane as our God. And so that continuing gift that Eastern worship and tradition brings to the church of a wonderment at the mystical transcendence of God is something that the church absolutely needs at her heart and core. And while in the West, we have seen in the last few decades a shift in our style of worship, thankfully, we see in parochial life a return to a sense that the Eucharist as something to be adored and worshiped in and of itself is indeed a positive sign within the Western Church. Not that we who have shifted in these last three decades wish to see the Eucharist isolated strictly for adoration, but it is a growing consciousness, a reemerging sensitivity to the fact that one element 
of our belief in the Eucharist is this simple transcendence which cries out for adoration and individualized attention and devotion. And so thankfully that spirit that the Eastern traditions so beautifully cultivate, that spirit of the Eucharist as something which symbolizes and draws us to the reality of a transcendent God who desires imminence with his children, challenges the church universally to continue to cultivate and to grow in that spirit of devotion and adoration. But also the Holy Spirit at work within the church, no doubt, has in its inspiration to the Western church given this consciousness to the church universally that the Western church's focus more perfectly upon the sense of Eucharist as community and community celebration in these last three decades challenges a marriage of individual love and devotion to corporate involvement within the church. And that consciousness then that these readings speak to us to of the Eucharist as something which truly is to be experienced, participated in, consumed, so that it nourishes and gives life to the body. Also is of course a very valid and critical celebration of the spirit of the Eucharist. And so as we are fed by this Eucharist, we are challenged in the Western experience in particular, to recognize how, as we go forth from that Eucharist, having been nourished by the very body of Christ, we are sent to build up the body of Christ more fully through gifts of life-giving service, through an expression that is evidence of the charity which we have received and been nourished by. And so we sense that these two wings that enable the church to concretely represent the fullness of our God is a common striving to have our celebration of the Eucharist reflect both the individual love and devotion of the member of the body and the unity of the body in a spirit of charity. May this time of prayer be that opportunity for each one of us to reflect on how the gifts of our various traditions feed the need of the whole body. And certainly while our traditions and their individualized beauty must be respected and must give witness to the full complexity that God inspires within humanity, these prayers and shared celebrations must also call us to a consciousness of how we become united by fostering that common desire to grow in charity and to sense that we who are fed by a God who is love in our celebration of the Eucharist must therefore be nourished to the point of manifesting that love in the unity which Christ prayed for at the first Eucharist as committed witnesses desiring to give evidence that we do indeed share a common unity of expression through a shared bond of charity. May we all go forth from this Eucharist, from this conference, to give witness to that core belief which resonates within each of us. loving the Lord with all our heart and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves for his sake, we present our petitions with hearts full of faith. Let us pray, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our Holy Father, Pope John Paul, 
for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and for all the holy people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the church in its mission in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the people of God in their need, that they may be cared for and sustained, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the sick, the suffering, and for those who have asked for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Father, you know the many different needs your people have in this life. Hear us and answer the prayers of all who believe in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The psalm at the offertory is in the worship hymnal, number 42. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. O oh God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you, like a dry, weary land without water. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary, to see your strength and your glory. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. For your love is better than life, my lips will speak your praise, so I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. On my bed I remember you. On you I muse through the night. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, 
both now and forever. Amen. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, to the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the of His church. Lord, may the bread and cup we offer bring your church the unity and peace they signify. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. At the Last Supper, as he sat at the table with his apostles, he offered himself to you as the spotless lamb, the acceptable gift that gives you perfect grace. Christ has given us this memorial of his passion to bring us its saving power until the end of time. In this great sacrament, you feed your people and strengthen them in holiness, so that the family of mankind may come to walk in the light of one faith. In one communion of love, we come then to this wonderful sacrament to be fed at your table and grow into the likeness of the risen Christ. Earth unites with heaven to sing the new song of creation as we adore and praise you forever. Holy, holy, Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All light, all holiness comes from you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up 
for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope John Paul, and all of our bishops with the clergy and the entire people that your Son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. And welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all those who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory, through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, common tongue that our Lord has taught us, calling God our one heavenly Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be you. and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Or oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Look to him and be radiant, so that your faces shall never be ashamed. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and was saved from every trouble. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In thanksgiving, the hymn is number 730 in the worship hymnal, number 730.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your body and blood in the Eucharist as a sign that even now we share your life. May we come to possess it completely in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning, everyone. As is our tradition at the Oriental Illumined Conference, as a token of our appreciation for our special guests, I'd like to present uh, to Father Dan Mayer uh, a small token of, of this year's conference. The uh, uh, conference has been coming here to the Basilica for four years now since we started, and Father Dan has been behind the scenes, if you will, helping us uh, with all of his uh, effort and members of the staff to support our liturgical services in this church and in the Byzantine Chapel. Uh, and I think it's uh, quite fitting, uh, Father Dan, for uh, us to thank you <coughs> for that effort and all of your work, uh, which has been so helpful to us over the years. So. Again, thank you very much. Shall we call you?